Water power swallowing, water bottle, don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful, homie, you spilling it. Welcome, 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 beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday webcast. As always, I am here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica, who does a marvelous job. And today, we have the pleasure, people, of having back a returning guest who is an awesome, awesome person and just a beloved human being. We have Miss Andrea Pierce. She is a tribal citizen and the founder and co-chair of the Anishinaabe Caucus. And she's here today to talk to us about, unfortunately, Line 5 being successful in their bid to continue. So it's a short show. Andrea, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. I'm going to turn it over to Val, who's going to shoot out the first question for you. Uh, Thanks for coming on such short notice, Andrea. Um, After we talked on on Friday, um, uh, actually, I think I found out Saturday morning, you went Friday to the meeting to talk to um, the commission and uh, tell them, uh, you know, not to approve this. And they still approved it. Um, approve the uh, the tunnel for line five. And so I don't want to assume that everybody um, knows what line five is. So we're going to start with that. Um, and most of our viewers do. We talk about line five a lot. Um, but yeah. just for anybody who um, who doesn't know, Andre, can you um, can you tell our listeners about what line five is and a little bit about the resistance that you've participated in throughout the years? So you've been we we've been doing this for a long time together. So can you tell everybody about that? And then we'll get into why the tunnel's so bad. <laughs> so line five, and let me open up by saying, um, it's speaking in my language so my people know who I am, okay? Right. I'm from Little Traverse Bay Band of Odawa Indians. I'm Bear Clan. Um, the protector of the forest, I might add. <laughs> um And Mm -hmm. Line 5 is a 70-year-old pipeline that never should have been built in the Straits of Mackinac, the largest source of fresh water. It was snuck in, and I say snuck in because nobody really knew it was there for a long time, I don't believe. People I've talked to who were um, working in tribal government at that time were surprised when we found out that it was there and how bad it is. It's put on, it's um, owned by Enbridge, which is a Canadian corporation, who is also in charge of the largest oil spill in Michigan, the Kalamazoo oil spill. So that was, so that's what we're afraid of. It comes through Michigan, it comes through Canada, goes through Minnesota, Wisconsin, who are all fighting their upgrades because they're trying to build in all of these states. And there's large uh, resistance in these states also. And comes through Michigan, through the UP, down through the Straits of Mackinac, down to um, the Marathon Station in Detroit, out to Sarnia, where I'm here. They export it to Canada to make plastics. This is what I'm hearing. Okay, so, so we're putting um, the world's largest res- uh, largest freshwater body of in- fresh water um, at risk for mm-hmm. plastic. That's mm. what I'm hearing. That was what was covered in a, one of the articles. You can Google it. If yeah. I'm wrong, then, you know, I shouldn't probably. Well, no, that's, how I, that's the way I understand it, too. That's, <laughs> what, I yeah, that's what I've heard. So yep. we're in a lot of danger. And we're, the rhetoric is that Enbridge is passing around up north and in the UP is that, you know, they're afraid that we're going to leave them without power, electricity or gas. And we use probably about 5 to 10 percent is what was covered on oil and water don't mix and different other websites, not just them. It's and they're trying to say we use like fifty or something. It's an insane amount that they're saying that we use. They lie. They've always oh, lied. That's what I have found. In my opinion, that's what I I believe. And unless they prove otherwise, you know, Ambridge is to the point that if they actually told me that it was raining outside, I'd have to go look. 
Yeah, absolutely. They always say go against everything, and then two weeks later we'll find out in the newspaper that yeah we were right. Yeah. So until uh, proven otherwise, I just yeah. I don't have much faith in them, especially since what happened with Kalamazoo, where they, you know, that tribe down there paid a lot of money to, for cleanup, and they never got recompense for it. Yeah. So. It's it was never a, fully cleaned up. You can still go to no. the Kalamazoo River and find tar balls from the tar sands. Another mm-hmm. thing that Enbridge lies about is they say that the uh, that Line 5 carries propane. It absolutely carries zero propane. It carries tar sands. There's no mm-hmm. cleaning up tar sands. And it'd be, it, it would be catastrophic for the Great Lakes. We And yeah. we have no control as the Michigan or Michigan, the state of Michigan or the citizens of Michigan have no control over what is considered clean up either. Enbridge no. has declared that Kalamazoo is cleaned up, even though we all know it's not. It still yeah. smells. You walk by, walk through there, you get footprints with oil in it. That's considered clean. They determined that's yeah. as much as we can do. Yeah. So it's not a good, it's not good for us. That's so ironic that, um, you know, that they are claiming and using this false narrative of if we don't exist, these cities in the UP won't have access to lights and utilities, gas, <laughs> and things of that nature. None of which is I true. Utility yeah. providers in that area will have something to say about that. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, unfortunately, they've spent millions and millions of dollars on on advertisements and things convincing people that line five is needed, but it's not. And another thing is it's it was supposed to be decommissioned after 50 years. It was never supposed to been run like indefinitely. Exactly. When it was built, it was supposed to be decommissioned after 50 years. And we're 70 years in. Exactly. And we always uh, talk about the Straits of Mackinac, but really there's a whole line of line five that should be removed. 70 different That's tributaries throughout right. Michigan. It's, it's all 70 dangerous. different tri- tributaries. Yeah, everywhere it goes. It's running through some portion of the Great Lakes, mm-hmm. you know, and, or the and, water, yeah. yeah, or the water, definitely. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, I know this is is such an obvious question because, you know, for us, because we all know, we, know, we understand it, but people need to know. It, yeah. But can you explain to our viewers why the Enbridge Tunnel is such a bad idea. Well, one of them is is that um, it, the Enbridge Tunnel, it's untested. We have never, nobody has ever went under this much water and built a tunnel underneath it ever. So we're we're being the the test dummies for a what five five hundred million dollar project that nobody has ever completed or done before. They say they can. But they also said that they they don't um, they didn't do an oil they didn't hit an um, anchor strike either for the longest time, right? We're back to what can you you got to prove it to me? I want to mm-hmm. see I want to be able to know. There's also yeah. a ten thousand year old sacred site on the Straits of Mackinac that we found that two years ago, and we would like to be able to to study that, and we can't because if they destroy that, we won't have that anymore. And they can't. How can they not do it? How can they? How can they possibly make a tunnel under the water and not damage it? There's supposed to be all kinds of blowout when they go under there. They're going to be digging, and that's supposed to be going into our water, which will affect the fish, the streams. It'll affect yeah. the turtles. Everything will be affected. And if they if they have if they mess it up, and we ended up with something horrible happening, you know, like another spill or, you know. The chemicals that they're going to be using to build this is, yeah. if you read up on it, it's horrific. And if yeah. that gets into our water, then what? How much money in tourism is going to be wasted? You know, we can't, we won't be able to. Tourism would be canceled. And the fact is, is, there's no nothing that actually points to if there was an uh, an actual oil spill that the tunnel would actually stop it from um, breaching into the water or anything like that. That's like. Um, and, and it, talking... the way it's, it, it's kind of like a ticking time bomb once you put a tunnel around it too, right? Like you're, you've, any little thing could start, yeah. and, you know, just. And, yeah, because and, it, really if they're shaking and when you're drilling, because there's going to be fracking, that's what they're talking about is fracking uh, underneath to build this tunnel. We're going to yeah. have earthquakes. What is that going to do to line five, the, the pipeline? Yeah. We yeah. are, 
the MPSC has agreed to leave it running until um, until this the tunnel is built. That's ridiculous. They're not even talking about starting that into 2026. We have a ticking well, time bomb, yeah. and even the time frame is ridiculous. The whole thing is a bad really idea. A if it's a when, right? We mm -hmm. we have to talk about it. Like it's it's not really a if an oil spill will happen. It's a when. Yeah. It's a when. Mm -hmm. it's, and if which, it's in the winter, we're screwed. They'll never be screwed. Yeah, you I mean all the ice. They My have ice is, out there that's icebergs come that are taller than me, and I'm like almost six foot. And yeah, they're tall. Yeah. People go out there and they climb on the icebergs, and it's really fun and cute and everything. And it's a nice little tourism thing. But realistically speaking, that's incredibly dangerous with the blind fire breaks at that particular during that time frame of the winter time. Oh, we wouldn't get it cleaned up. We It'd can't ever be able to be cleaned they up. They filled the spill drill when it was perfectly calm in the summertime. They filled the spell drill. And that was when the Coast Guard got involved. It's well, this is not helpful to us at all. There are all these areas that you see i don't know if you follow government websites but i follow like local state and federal government websites that are so angered and concerned and fighting to ensure that certain flora and fauna don't become invasive species and invasive in the waterways but you're not worried about this pipeline causing permanent damage to the waterways the the ecosystem and the people that, that rely on this waterway for clean drinking and, and you know, basic living needs of that water. Right. Traditionally, we use it for um, fishing, mm -hmm. right? Wild ricing. You know, how is a, if it, when it breaks, and we're saying when, how is that going to affect the wild rice? All that oil yeah. in there. You're right. All that tar sands. It's disgusting. We have a pipeline plover. Um, it's a little bird that's just coming off the extinction list that lives up there. Right? He could be put in danger. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Andrea, can you... Um, and I'm going to try to talk about this without... Um, oh. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, it felt like a direct blow to my soul, to be honest with you. After all of these years to have them approve this permit, can you tell us what happened on Friday? Um, well, yep. first, you, they they didn't even, you didn't even know. I mean, you're a person who pays attention. So they didn't even put this out publicly that this was going to be decided upon on that day. You're a person yep. who was paying attention. Um, had you not been, none of us would probably even know. Exactly. Um, we had, yeah, we had less than 24 hours notice from yeah. uh, when they put the meeting out on it's a really Friday. really intentional. <laughs> yeah, that was. And then, don't forget, there's a rate increase hike too, right? The DTE rate increase hike. Three hundred and sixty-eight million dollars was passed, right, for yeah. DTE. All of that was a silent. They didn't. Get, they gave zero public notice of it. Mm -hmm. Less than twenty-four you, hours. We raced up there. We filled up uh, what the three little rooms that we could. We had standing room only up there. The people showed up, and I'm very proud of everybody that came to the meeting. They said what they had to say. We sat there. They showed up when our numbers needed to count. They were there. And what happened was the MPSC has ignored 23,000 comments of Michigan citizens. They ignored 23,000. Yeah, 23,000 comments. And that's right up there with Nestle, right? Yeah. They, um, they ignored tribal citizens. They tried to ignore tribal government. They ignored Michigan citizens. They ignored their children. They ignored our, our, our tourism. They ignored our um, traditional health healing their cultural beliefs they ignored everything to pass this tunnel for, for a what? pipeline that's running illegally yes three years now illegally running and that's what i need think we need to do i know the next the next question is probably going to be what's happening and i'll cover that what i think we should be working on next but basically what happened is that this mpsc which was all all three members all three of them a Governor Whitmer appointees. She chose yeah. them. And Scripps has been no no friend to the environment. No. He started off being like he was, but he really isn't. He is harmful to our environment. That's, he doesn't I, listen to Michigan citizens. And well, in my opinion, they need to be removed. 
it, 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 we've been all people all over Michigan. It doesn't even matter what side of the aisle you're on. People from all over Michigan have been standing against line five for, okay. for upwards to 15 years at this point. Like this first there's so just falling on deaf ears. Yeah. And we had a trifecta, which has let this go through to been very little, anything, very little has been done in the, in the way of environment. Yeah. We got a fake solution for the Bill 271, the Climate Healthy, which is, if you read it, is probably what allowed Line 5 to be passed. Yeah. You know, this tunnel, really, it's it's horrific what's happening right now in it's, Democrats. This is, I don't know what else we're, we're supposed to be able to take when this is, we're just being fed lies and bullshit. Oh, mm -hmm. BS? Should I just say lies and BS? Oh, that's you, can, you can say bullshit. It's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank it's, you. <laughs> it's an infuriating moment. You're allowed to say bullshit. I feel like this is bullshit. I've got other choice words. We'll we'll just save I'm that for off to. the air. Yeah, that's good. But <laughs> really, we need to have what we need to do is contact President Biden because we are on this pipeline is operating illegally and has been for three years. We have a um, an, an eviction notice. It is now trespassing. That's right. We need to call on Biden to shut this shit down. Shut it down now. Shut it that's down. Because I'm Michigan, done being nice. The Michigan I'm government is not protecting the water. They do not care at this point. We are rubber stamping. Our government is rubber stamping every freaking thing. Mm -hmm. We got a 368 million DTE rate increase. You realize last year they paid 700 millions to their investors? Yeah. yeah so at no, this point, it, we are just paying for that. We're just paying yeah. in profit shares. Yeah, that's and who why do you I'm think is going to pay for you're this personal. tunnel? Who do you think? Check out the MPSC website and you will see throughout the years, we pay for these tunnels and pipelines. Well, this is the first tunnel. We pay for these pipelines. Mm -hmm. They yeah. bill us in rate increases. So check it out. We are we are really, really screwed, and we need to stand up and fight. That's yes, right. I would think we should contact M um, Whitmer and ask her to remove these people from the MPSC because they are not representing, uh, they're not representing us as the people of Michigan. They That's are right. not protecting the Great Lakes, which is in the Michigan Constitution. They need to be removed. That's and right. Scripps needs to resign. And are are really new, and one is over whatever Dan Scripps tells them to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one was like four months old, and she abstained. And I think we need to send out a message as citizens of Michigan: that we will not take this. That's right. We will not take this. We call for their heads. We they need to be fired from these jobs, and we need to find more people who are actually working for the environment. That's right. We need to contact President Biden. Tell him to shut this shit down. Yes, yeah. not just get angry and and call for them to and be. We've got to act. We're in a moment. We have to take some action. Yeah. So, in that frame of mind, what can people do to get involved? And can you give us just a brief overview of what some you think some of our next steps should be? Because it's definitely time to take action. Right. Well, she did say calling President Biden and Whitmer right now just seems like it, you know, um, That's flooding it right their, now. Yeah, yeah, flooding mm -hmm. their offices. Yeah. Send emails directly to Jerry Norcia because he's the CEO mm -hmm. of DTE. Yeah. We yeah. need to find yeah. out who the CEO of Enbridge is and start. Oh, we know who the CEO. We know where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> We need to find out where the um, MPSC lives too. This is ridiculous. We were ignored again. They're they're just passing everything. I mean, if you think about it, Nestle got one. All these DTE rate hikes that our govern or that our governor is allowing to happen from the board she put in place. Dana Nestle is the only one fighting for us. Yeah. Yes. She is the only one. She just what she's checking over all the rate increases that come through. And stopping a lot of the money. They would be yeah. like hand over fist right now if Dana yeah. Nessel wasn't standing up for us. Yeah. And well, we need to stand well, up a lot of the reason Line 5 is a lot of the reason she got elected. We got her elected because she was she was saying that she wanted to decommission mm -hmm. Line 5. Yeah. And she we, we wouldn't be here legally where the permit was pulled right. in Michigan had she not done that work. Um, Governor Whitmer really has been um, disappointing throughout all of this because she got elected for the same reason. We, we got her elected because she was standing against line five and we knew that we had to we had to have people in government that were going to stand against line five with us. Maybe we knew that she wasn't going to have the same kind of teeth, but and she definitely proved that. 
Right. And for her to put a, 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 a board, a board, an MPSC board together that is not following that. Yeah. For, you know, what she was elected on, I think is yeah. disgusting. I yeah. really do. No, I, I feel this disgusting. is a real hit on. Yeah, I feel this is a real hit on Whitmer and her leadership yeah. that her boards are, you know, if she's if she's supporting them, that's sick. But if yeah. they're running against her, what her wishes were when she got elected, then that's even worse. Yeah. Yep. They're running rogue, and if that's the case, I don't know. I'm not privy to that information, but it seems awfully strange that, you know, the board went for this when we have been saying all along we don't need it. And to hear children sit there, what, Moses is nine, I think it said Moses, and um, Pearl is 13, to sit there and say they lost all faith, they felt helpless in our government. I that? lost We're all faith. I mean, if they're doing that to our children, certainly that's how my kids felt when they found out. Yeah. Um, but that's how but I, I have felt. To say. I felt extremely hopeless mm -hmm. and angry and the young victimized at this point because we've been fighting this for years. Yeah. yeah. This Generation Z, though, they are not sitting down and, and talking to people. They're not. They're taking it straight to the streets. Yeah. They're not wasting any time trying to negotiate with anybody. They yeah. have the mentality of destroying our earth, destroying our waterways is an act of terrorism, and we do not negotiate with terrorists. That's right. Exactly. And that's where we should be. Why are we allowing yeah. this crap to happen, really? Yeah. I mean, what are we leaving them? I yeah. work for seven generations. My, that's right. I am consistently thinking about what is happening to our future and what are we leaving our, our future descendants yeah we're leaving a stranded asset is where we're at right now because right. we're we're moving from fossil fuels we don't need it we're moving to other forms of electricity right i mean a whole bunch of crap just recently got approved right including crap farm waste <laughs> yeah you know mm -hmm. and that bill 271 i mean this is just terrible and we really need we as people we as parents you know we as citizens of michigan really need to stand up and say, we're done taking this crap. You need to fire these people, get them off these boards. We need new people on these boards. And tell Biden, you're running for election soon. Mm. You have no mm. chance in hell if you like, keep letting all of, if you keep letting these pipelines go through. He's got no. MVP. We've got um, Willow, the, the tunnel. What other ones do we have? Those are all Enbridge pipelines, too. Exactly. Right. They're all Enbridge pipelines. So and Enbridge is in three states now. But we're we're seeing, fighting Enbridge in three states. Yeah. We're seeing the same type of tactics that we've seen with the cities that are predominantly black and brown communities across Michigan, which is that emergency management. So Enbridge is like the emergency manager of pipelines. They got all got different names, but they all got Enbridge in common. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, they're a monster corporation. They, they're a monster corporation that tells mm -hmm. lies, that openly tells lies. Um, Andrea, before we wrap up, are there any final thoughts? What What do people need to know? I think you'd better get your butts active right now because we're about to get stuck with the tunnel that we're going to pay for, and we have no control over what's going to be in it and what's going to happen to it. Yeah. I really think everybody should contact Governor Whitmer. Tell her we're disgusted with how this went through. She needs to reappoint new people to the MPSC because these people are not doing the job. Yeah. Stop rubber stamping crap. Yeah. Contact Biden and force to shut down now. Yeah. If I got evicted, right, my stuff would be in the streets. Yeah. There'd be no, oh, let's keep rock. Let me keep staying here yeah. while we decide where I'm going to move next. No, none of that. My <laughs> stuff would be in the streets. Why are they operating? Yeah. Right. They what was that, Nicole? Sheriff fat lock your door too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why are they allowed? We should That's have had the need. National Guard out here already. Yeah. State police should be blocking them. Yeah. From Instead of entering protecting the buildings. Them, right. But they protect them. They protect them. They're paid to. Yeah. You know, but, a lot of a moonlight for Enbridge. Once we started working. Yeah. Once we started working up north, we realized that all the different police agencies were hired by Enbridge for different things. Um, St. Ignace and Mackinac and the state police. If you think yeah. about most moonlighting for Enbridge. What it is, is that Michigan is trying to stay on good terms with Canada. 
Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, Canada I, really forced us. They pulled up it's ancient a law. Based company, we already poisoned hundreds of thousands of people on the east side collecting Canadian trash that was burnt in the incinerator. So now the Canadian, this Canadian entity is going to be allowed to poison our waterways too. No, been allowed, yeah. been allowed. Open invitation to be allowed. It's yeah. disgusting. Like rolled out the red carpet. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this emergency broadcast with us, Andrea. Um, glad to. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you're here too. Yes. Um, yeah. We we really we're in a moment um, uh, where folks are being activated very quickly, and this is definitely going to be one of those things that um, us we're going to have to we're going to have to come together and stop. Uh, we can't allow this uh, to happen. Oh, so, that's it. Go. Cool. I'm sorry. Just no, thought of okay. something really quick. Oh, yeah. About the police and how they're taking, how they're working with Enbridge. Do you realize that these police are also using our state bought and paid for equipment? Yep. They go to uh, like Standing Rock. We saw them all over the country showing up with our guns that we yeah. bought and paid for with taxpayer money. There are. Um, our cars, and they're working from Enbridge. They're moonlighting for Enbridge. They're oh, moonlighting for Enbridge with taxpayer equipment. Yes. And I think that needs to be addressed too. When I was, you know, when I had a um, a work computer, I could only use that for my job. If I used it for anything else, I was automatically fired. Yeah. So why are they allowed to moonlight and do other work with our equipment, our tax funded equipment that we had to pay millages to fund, yeah. and then go to Go use it for um, these pipeline companies and That's ETP right. and Enbridge, all of them. Not just, you know, yeah. well, we it's a big thing. We the police as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it back into communities. Exactly. Well, thank you, Andrea, exactly. for, um, again, for doing this emergency uh, broadcast. We really appreciate you. And I'm thankful that you were there and that you were paying attention. Um, and, yeah, we've got we've got a lot a lot of work ahead of us. To our listeners, please share this. Please get involved any way that you can. Please call Governor Whitner, Whitmer and please call President Biden and demand that Line 5 be decommissioned right now. Right now, we're in a serious situation. Um, until next time, my friends, try to stay afloat. Try to look out for each other. Bye. Be careful, homie. You're spilling it.